Your Excellency, Mr. Leopoldo Francisco Sahores, Ambassador of Argentina in Pakistan. Former Ambassador of Pakistan, Mrs. Naila Johan. Distinguished guests, Chairman, Members, Board of Governors, and Members KFR. May I now request Ambassador Naila Johan for her elaborations over the topic. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Thank you so much for inviting me on this very auspicious occasion of the friendship between Argentina and Pakistan. Uh, the 70th anniversary, that's long time. So I would have liked His Excellency um, Solaris to have started, but if you want me to do so, I can say that our relations are very well founded since 1951. So it is one of the oldest embassies we have in the world, 1951. It was October. Uh, we have a lot of things in common. Pakistan has always been part of the consensus resolution on Malvinas because it's an important issue. And we believe in principles and right to self-determination as far as Kashmir is concerned. Initially, Argentina was also supportive of the resolutions on Kashmir, but since lately, because of the complications in the Malvinas issue, they haven't been that articulate, although we would like them to be so, because Kashmir is also a very important issue. Uh, we have our friendship between the people, although I would always say that our lands are far away, but our hearts are very close. So I would like to seek uh, His Excellency Ambassador Suarez's uh, views on it. And I think it would be better uh, that we have an interactive uh, uh, session because from that uh, we can move forward. So with this, I thank you for your patient hearing and we can move forward the discussion. Thank you very much. May I now request His Excellency, Mr. Leopoldo Francisco Saures, Ambassador of Argentina for his plenary address. Thank you very much, Chairman of the Karachi Council on Foreign Relations, Mr. Ikram Chigal, Council Secretary General, Commodore Sadid Amber Malik, Ambassador and friend Naila Johan, members, Board of Governors, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is an honor for me to address this webinar to discuss Argentina-Pakistan relations over the years and its future aspirations. And I commend the Council for this initiative, which is no doubt a timely one, as both countries, as Ambassador has already mentioned, are celebrating the 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations. Being myself new to Pakistan, I um, arrived almost seven, seven months ago. I cannot more than agree with the idea of thinking about future aspirations, as my challenge from day one is about unfolding the full potential of the bilateral relationship uh, uh, between uh, Argentina and Pakistan. Seven years ago, as Ambassador mentioned, on October the 15th, 1951, both governments decided to establish bilateral relationships by an exchange of notes concluded in Washington, D.C. Later, the same month, a presidential decree in Argentina approved the establishment of the consulate in Karachi. Our consular post was mandated to find the premises for the future embassy and uh, interacted first with authorities in Karachi and later on in Rawalpindi, while Islamabad was under construction. And the embassy opened in Islamabad on January the 1st, 1968. 2021 marks also another important anniversary as we commemorate the 50 years of the uh, adoption of Security Council Resolution 303, which was uh, uh, mentioned by Ambassador Johan on December the 6th, 1971, a process in which Argentina played a crucial role. As you know, the UN Security Council was unable to pronounce itself on the situation arising from the armed conflict between Pakistan and India uh, due to the veto of the, of the former Union um, of Soviet Socialist Republics. 
and the Argentine delegate to the UN Security Council at the time was Ambassador Carlos Ortiz de Rosas, a prominent Argentine diplomat, and he was determined to make every effort to halting the military conflict and preventing the intervention of big international players in the subcontinent. Uh, I had the pleasure to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the establishment of relations with uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Mr. Mahmoud Qureshi, uh, last October with a tree plantation ceremony over there. Uh, there were seven species and three of them native of, uh, from Argentina. Still on the multilateral field, uh, let me acknowledge and thank the constant support of Pakistan for the resumption of negotiations between Argentina and the United Kingdom in order to find a peaceful and definitive solution to the sovereignty dispute related to Malvinas Island, including the surrounding maritime areas. And just to share with you, uh, for the first time, Argentina has joined the mission, the UN mission uh, in Pakistan and India, and is planning to uh, continue its presence next year. We have two uh, army people over there. So where are we now? Has this institutional framework proved successful when it comes to its implementation? Have we been able to diversify bilateral trade and increase it? Have we witnessed a surge in investments? As equally important, have we helped in promoting cultural ties, people-to-people -people contacts, better knowledge of our respective national and regional junctures? I think taking stock, and I think we, you will agree, is always welcome and necessary if one wants to move forward, progress and excel. This is what our governments made last year in October and in May this year, once this uh, political consultation and trade uh, commissions uh, were convened and held their, their, their meetings. It was a very uh, useful exercise because both sides confirmed that much remains to be done to respond positively to those questions I, I put. But at the same time, we realized that we can do much better. I think it's not about setting very extremely ambitious targets, but uh, about how to deliver based on achievable aims not about a proliferation of MOUs and uh, agreements, although I believe it's important to have this institutional framework, but I think it's more about how to work on specific projects uh, which could be replicated, applying a bottom-top approach. Also, very interesting thing that we should try to explore, exchanging views on the, on the challenges both Argentina and Pakistan face at this very moment in their negotiations with the International Monetary Fund vis-a-vis -vis all the structural reforms that we have to undertake. And let me tell you that what Pakistan is discussing with the IMF is exactly what we are discussing at the same time with Washington, although our uh, program is much higher than yours, let me tell you. So I think the um, challenges like the many uh, I, I have just mentioned, and there are just a few of them, can be defeated if one is certain of his and her or her aspirations and has the will to do it. I'm sure all of us uh, participating today are on the same page, so I think we can make a, a, a big difference. So I thank you very much and I'm happy to take any uh, comment or any uh, question that might arise from my, my presentation. Thank you. One of the members has already sent a question, and that is that how did you handle IMF? And towards the end, you have mentioned a little about it. But uh, as uh, Pakistan is deeply engraved into this situation, and it, the question says that you, Argentina, was once had defaulted. How did, it, did you come out of it? Well, uh, first of all, as I've said, we, we face similar challenges like the ones Pakistan is facing right now. Uh, we have to undertake all these uh, structural reforms in terms of labor market, uh, revenue, uh, um, 
easing uh, uh, tax burden. So we have the same challenges, although our program is much higher. It's 45 billion dollars. Uh, so now we are very close to, <laughs> to, if we don't have it fixed, if we don't uh, reach an agreement in March, or at least a standby, uh, we might face in the same situation. I think we will be able to, to make it, but we are uh, facing that, that uh, challenge and constraint. Would you ever, and we all do that in English language, I'm sure uh, students over there would like to avail it. And uh, you have already mentioned and invited our students by first learning Spanish at your universities and then taking admissions. That the message has gone and therefore uh, gone to the uh, participants and it will appear in the press also. Uh, but uh, would you like to elaborate if any students would like to join the Pakistan universities? Well, so far, uh, Spanish, as far as I know, it's uh, only taught at the National um, Modern Language University uh, in Islamabad. And we are talking just about 25 students all over Pakistan. So this is something that we have to try to reverse and we have to promote uh, the teaching of Spanish. What, I, what I'm, I, I've started to do is contact different universities and I'm more than happy uh, to contact any university that you might think uh, would be interesting to you uh, to see whether uh, they can uh, include Spanish as a language, uh, uh, as a foreign language uh, in their curricula, uh, whether they have already uh, foreign language centers or they can start it uh, uh, by Spanish. And uh, in order for them, for those students to uh, finish their uh, studies and get a certification, we are working with the Ministry of Education from Argentina. So any Pakistan university offering Spanish can um, uh, certify uh, those students. So any certificate issued by a Pakistan university will have international recognition. There's another question from one of our members Board of Governors, Mr. Mohammad Farooq Afzal, and uh, he said, despite the potential, our bilateral trade is less than 200 million. There is a need of a joint business forum to be held. Can you please help to arrange such a forum in Pakistan? Yes, uh, that's, I think that's very necessary. And I believe, um, as I was, I've suggested in my presentation, that um, rather than uh, setting uh, bilateral MOUs between governments and then uh, not being able to implement, I think we have to talk between, we have to make the connection between businessmen in Argentina and Pakistan so they know each other and uh, uh, they start working together. And if that can uh, materialize in a government to government agreement, that's fantastic. But I think we should start uh, in the with grassroots. So um, I've already uh, uh, had meetings with the Chamber of Commerce in Lahore, Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I had to go to Karachi and uh, I ha I've been talking to different chambers of commerce uh, in the country. And I want to do that uh, and I'm uh, here to help. So uh, I'm more than happy to talk to any of the members uh, who might have uh, any suggestion and help, and help them to contact their counterparts in Argentina. Thank you. And, uh... We will now come to the last question, and this is about the touristic attractions in both the countries. Pakistan has got some beautiful touristic points, and Argentina too has got a number of beautiful spots to be visited. I think uh, there's a need to promote touristic attractions for both the countries, for the people of both the countries. Would it be possible to do something in this respect too? Well, absolutely. I think um, it would be great if we could start working in uh, bringing journalists from Argentina to Pakistan and vice versa to showcase what each country has to offer. Uh, bring, starting as well, starting also uh, Spanish courses with focus on, on Argentine culture would also, would also be a, a, a good trigger of tourism. Um, working with uh, the great and very active uh, Pakistan ambassador to Argentina. Uh, he should be a partner in doing so. So I think there's a lot of things to do. Uh, 
and uh, being able to connect uh, you know, on a virtual uh, platforms like this uh, will definitely will definitely help. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your address, and thank you, Ambassador Nala Johan. And uh, we will conclude now with our Chairman Ikram Sagal's uh, concluding remarks. Excellency, Sonoris, Ambassador Nara Chauhan, and all distinguished participants. First of all, it's a pleasure to have you on the panel and discussion, and also a great pleasure to have heard you and hear about the great opportunities uh, that have uh, that can be utilized for the benefit of both the peoples of Argentina and Pakistan. Um, it is really a surprise that we are one of the older embassies that have existed uh, with each other. And uh, there, but it's a surprise and not so much surprise. Argentina and Pakistan are in many cases very much like each other, far apart from each other. Um, if you look at, uh, the, like the, His Excellency has said, uh, particularly in the agriculture field, we have a lot to learn. Like, like uh, Pakistan, uh, Argentina was prim primarily an agri-based industry. In Argentina pays that, uh, but more importantly, Argentina uh, raised a lot of cattle, a lot, lot of and this is which you know we need to learn from that. Moreover, we need to build on the milk products. We are the fifth largest uh, milk-producing country in the world, and yet we do not make cheese of the note that we can and we, we could make so much from Argentinian expertise and um, I'm also, also glad that Argentina has bought the JF uh, Thunder. You know, uh, I know of something like, for example, the Austrians have sold you the very long time back the SK-105 Corsair tank and our Khalid tanks and all are actually a derivative of that. The same person who designed the SK-105, Dr. Fedba Bauer from Austria, actually helped in designing the Tank. So we have another thing in common, uh, which we have, etc. So, you know, Excellency, the, all these things, all the rhetoric need to be put in words, uh, uh, words that we put in deeds. Things have to happen. And things have to happen by interaction. And, uh, you know, it is, uh, it, it is very, uh, the thing is that the Council of Pakistan relations actually is entering into uh, exercise where we are doing a private sector enterprise where we are uh, going to go to certain ambassadors who have served in those countries, in certain typical countries like Argentina and maybe in in, in uh, UK, uh, France, etc. You know, and we are going to ask them to go back to those countries to really uh, dispel some of the negative, negative propaganda uh, that is existing and to promote uh, the friendship that can be promoted. So, you know, for us, uh, somebody like Ambassador and Naira Chahal is a, is, a, is a must if you can ever agree to go back to Argentina, of course, at our cost and other things, to really, really open the, this thing. And similarly, we would like to um, uh, uh, tell you that we would may, may like to sponsor um, maybe a couple of people from, um, media people from Argentina to come to Pakistan uh, to you know, be with us for maybe two weeks, three weeks roam around Pakistan, see Pakistan, and, uh, and uh, you know, make sure that uh, Pakistan is uh, brought to the Argentinian people. And so there's so much of, let us say, uh, 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 things that can we can do together. So, Excellency, uh, let me again thank you. Uh, it's been most refreshing. It's most refreshing uh, to, to have heard from you. Uh, Ambassador Narachal, of course, it is wonderful um, having heard and all the things that you have said. And I look forward to further interaction. And Excellency, uh, whenever you come to Karachi, you must give us time physically uh, to give us lunch or dinner, and which we will again try to project you physically as the business people of uh, Karachi and also the academics, etc. So they, they can learn from you firsthand what all can really happen between uh, Pakistan and Argentina. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, thank you, Ambassador, uh, for your time.